bar pizza. You've probably had some. It is widely available as the predominant style in my area, and there are all different versions, including the cob. Let's get into deep analysis to break down some pies, and that's starting right now. One of the bar pizza legends in my area is Red Front. The original location in Troy, where the building actually has a Red Front, is still open, but only for dinner. Their location further north in Clifton Park has lunch hours, so that's where I got my pizzas to try. I just pulled up to Red Front, and I actually ordered two pizzas. We did one original 10 cut rectangle, and we did the other one cob, also 10 cut. I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison to kind of show the exact difference between these two, and I can show you guys what makes this pizza incredible. I felt kind of bad. There was one guy, and he was all there by himself. I got there as soon as they opened, of course. He gave me 25-minute estimate, and it was a little bit more than 25 minutes. Not a problem. The phone was ringing off the hook. This place is super popular. All right, first up, we're gonna go with the regular cheese on top, so let's see how it tastes. super hot. A lot of sauce. Seems like more sauce than I'm used to for a red front pizza. The crust is nice and crispy. So far so good. The one thing to note about that is that they're not shy about the sauce or the cheese, but the cheese gets nice and bubbly and the sauce is very sweet. Anyway, let's switch over to the cob and then what we'll do when we get back to the home studio, we'll compare the two and I'll kind of show you what makes this particular pizza special and kind of how it fits into the grand scheme of the bar pies in the area. Next up we have the cob. This was brought to my attention probably about 16, 17 years ago by a friend from the comic shop actually. I had never known what the cheese on bottom pizza upstate New York was. Let's see how it tastes and I'll talk a little more about this after we taste it. So the distinguishing feature of the cob is the fact that the sauce is still nice and kind of like soft. Usually when you bake a pizza, the sauce will actually get sticky and dry out a little bit. This did a little, but it still maintains a little bit of that fluidness. Like it's not gonna drip off the pizza, but it tastes soft when you bite into it as opposed to sticky. That's incredible. So as you can see, super unique style of bar pizza with the cob and with the regular, it's kind of your standard bar pizza, but there's still some things that are kind of unique to actual Red Front that we could break down in a scientific way and go into a lot of the details about what's great about the Red Front pizza. So I've gone to this Clifton Park location a number of times before, and it's actually remarkably different from the location in Troy. And if you want to know why the business is called Red Front, well, you look for the building with the red front. We're talking about Tavern Pizza, and the Troy location of Red Front is definitely a tavern. But the Clifton Park is remarkably different. It's definitely geared more toward takeout, even though there are a handful of tables in there. As I carried this pizza out, the one thing that really was striking me pretty hard because they were super hot was the smell. Now, what I was getting from this was a very strong smell of like early 90s Pizza Hut and that's not too surprising because Red Front cooks their pizzas in a pan as did Pizza Hut at the time and that kind of speaks to the very first thing that's unique about Red Front Pizza and that's the crust. Now when I say the crust is unique I don't mean unique for the form I mean unique for the area. The tavern pizza or bar pizza is a typical thing up here and as I mentioned in the last pizza video where I was comparing two New York styles sort of the quintessential style up here in New York is actually this bar style pizza which is most of the time rectangle. Sometimes it's round, including red front. It's cooked in a pan, usually a lot of oil on the bottom. With both pies, I can tell you that both are cooked in a pan. Both had plenty of oil on the bottom to the point where, as you see when I flip this over, the bottom crust has a little bit of oil to it, and I'm sure if I would squeeze it, a little oil would come out. That's what you get when you get a bar pizza. But let's talk about the actual nature of the crust, because on both pizzas, between the original cheese with cheese on top and the cob with cheese on the bottom, you can see here that there's not a whole lot of rise. Now, depending how you feel, I come from downstate where the rectangular Sicilian pizza is a big thing. The first time I had this style pizza, it was a little bit shocking because it's almost like the thickness of a New York crust, but cooked in a pan. Kind of like what you get at home when you use like a supermarket dough. I'm not saying that's what they're doing here at Red Front, just to give you the visual, something that you could probably relate to in your everyday life. But because it doesn't get a whole lot of rise, what they do is they make a nice little rim around the pizza and it doesn't actually develop any kind of extra puffiness where there isn't toppings. And where that's kind of interesting, there's kind of a well and a little bit of a rim around it. I don't want to call it an end crust because it really isn't an end crust. But the difference between the cheese on top and the cheese on bottom, because the cheese on top, some of the cheese falls out, you get a little bit of this crustiness around the edge of the pizza. And it almost kind of gives you that vibe of like a Detroit style pizza where they kind of make it edge to edge where the cheese is touching against that like carbon steel. And you get that little crispness. When comparing the original cheese to the cob at Red Front, it's something to definitely keep note of because with the cob, 
up because they use sliced mozzarella cheese, you don't get the opportunity for it to do that. But the notable thing about the crust is that there's not a whole lot of rise to it. There's not a whole lot to chew through, but it's kind of a distinct thing for this style pie. And I would say red front is probably on the thinner side within this area for this rectangular square cut pizza. One thing I can show you on that bottom crust though is that you get kind of an uneven bake. And that's kind of indicative when you're cooking in a pan with plenty of oil, you're gonna get your spots that are gonna get a little hotter that are up against that brick oven and you get that conduction that goes through the levels, but it's not gonna be even for the most part. And it comes down to whether you stretch the dough out evenly, whether there's any air bubbles underneath the dough. But in both pies, you can see that there's quite a bit of white areas of the dough. And also kind of transitioning to the cheese with the cheese on top version, as well as a little bit with the cheese on bottom version, there's a little bit of browning to the cheese, which tells me these are probably cooking at a really high temperature. And in terms of the dough, it's probably a very low hydration dough, which essentially results in not a lot of rise over the relatively short cook time. And as I mentioned while I was there, the pizzas were ready just about as much time as he told me it would take. So for him to form the pizzas, top the pizzas and bake the pizzas, cut them, put them in a box, it was 27 minutes. And that was also with him doing other stuff in between. So figure about 18, 20 minutes for the bake and rest of the time for the administrative tasks of waiting for it to cool enough to cut and everything. For the cheese on top version, there's these little speckled parts. And I noticed when I was actually reading the reviews online, which I always do, I never kind of take them to heart, but I always look at what people are saying. There's actually a woman who ordered from the Troy location who said that the pizza at Red Front ruined her granddaughter's birthday party, which sounds like a bad day, but she called the pizza burnt. But looking at these pictures here, it doesn't look any farther off than what I got, maybe a little bit more on the dark side. And I think that's just a function of the fact that it's cooking at a very high heat and you got kind of that convection and that's what's gonna happen. I also would speculate that the cheese is probably a higher fat cheese. They're probably not mixing in as much non-fat if at all. And that kind of goes to the fact transitioning over to the cob pizza where they use sliced cheese underneath the sauce. So what they do when they build a cob is they'll stretch out their dough. They have sliced mozzarella cheese, which comes in either whole or non-fat variety, which they slice on a slicer. And they'll put slices of the cheese on there, then the sauce, then they'll bake it. That cheese is a little more common to find in the higher fat version versus the low fat version. But it could be that they're using both. I would imagine just to cut down on the number of things you're ordering, you would just have one product over the other, including the shredded cheese. And if I were to guess based on efficiency and cost, it's probably cheaper to buy bricks of the cheese and multi-purpose them, either slice them for cob or shred them for standard pizza and kind of do that in house rather than buy it already shredded because it adds a few cents a pound when you do it that way. And you got to remember a pizzeria like this, they're kind of thinking at scale. So it's not like you go into the supermarket and for convenience, you'll pick up the cheese because it's a few cents more over a number of pounds of cheese that are getting used every day over the course of weeks, over the course of months. Those those pennies on the pound is going to save them a lot of money over time. So that's kind of what they're looking at there. Now let's focus in on the cob a little bit because that's kind of where Red Front stands out. I mentioned there was a little bit of browning on the cheese and it really isn't evident because the sauce is kind of applied from edge to edge. There are a little bit of pockets where there is only cheese really close to the end crust. And you can see here, there's a nice little bubbling to it and a little bit of browning. And I love that little bite there because it kind of gives you a break from the sauce. I kind of had doubts of whether or not the cheese on top and cheese on bottom uses the same sauce or not. Today I've kind of debunked that. They're definitely using the same sauce for both and the reason why I say that is because the sauce on both pizzas was super sweet. It actually was a little bit sweeter than I even remember it being. It's been a while since I've had a Red Front pizza, especially the Cobb. We used to order it all the time for WrestleMania back in like the late 2000s and I remember the sauce being a little bit less sweet than it was today and having a little bit of like a red pepper kind of spice to it. I didn't taste too much red pepper in terms of the sauce today and honestly I didn't really detect too many herbs or garlic or anything, which was interesting. That's kind of where this stands out as well. If you're not into sweet tomato sauce, this pizza probably isn't gonna be your thing. And when I say sweet, once you get to that cob where it's applied on top and as it bakes, it actually concentrates down a little bit, that sweetness is even more intense as opposed to the cheese on top where the sauce is protected by the cheese layer and actually melds a little bit with the actual oils from the cheese. And in that case is a little bit more dilute than with the cob. But in both cases, the sweetness of that sauce really came out and given the fact that the crust is not very thick. You end up with a situation where the sauce really does overpower the experience. But I mean, look at this Cobb pizza. There's nothing about this that kind of tells you that they're gonna be shy with tasting the tomato sauce. That's exactly what the experience that you're in for is based on the visual. So you shouldn't expect anything less than that. Now, if I had to pick between these two, if somebody said, you have to tell me which one you think is the better pizza, it would be really difficult. The problem is for the cheese on top pizza, it's kind of average for what we have in the area. And the fact that the crust is kind of thin, I would pick a lot 
of other pizzas before I would pick the cheese on top version. However, when you consider the cheese on bottom version, because this is such a unique pizza in the area and versus any other cheese on bottom pizzas that are out there, if you think about like a Utica pizza, like a tomato pie versus like a Sicilian style New York City where you got that nice thick crust with the sauce on top, this red front cob, it's a whole lot more saucy than any of those styles. I guess maybe it rivals tomato pie, but for me tomato pie is a lot more of a thicker type of sauce. This here is definitely like your typical tomato sauce that doesn't have any tomato chunks, if that makes any sense. But the cob is definitely a super unique experience, and I would say if you're ever in the capital region of New York, Red Front's Cobb Pizza is a must-try food. One thing I noticed while I was there waiting, all my years going to Troy, I never knew that you could actually get pizza by the slice, and I actually still don't know. Because the hours at the two places were different, I kind of had to go to Clifton Park because I had to record this in the middle of the day. The other thing I thought was awesome, they had a drunken chicken parm sub, which is vodka sauce instead of tomato sauce, and that sounded absolutely amazing. I kind of want to see what that's all about, so maybe subject for a future analysis. If you enjoyed this tavern pizza analysis, make sure you hit the video with a thumbs up and subscribe so future videos come up in your feed. And make sure you click into the playlist right here for even more pizza analysis.